Hey y'all! Hey, I'm Courtney. I'm Sarah. And this is Bodice Tipplers. It's a podcast about reading and drinking through the books that we used to steal off our grandmother's nice dance. So today we are reading Savage Ecstasy by Janelle Teller. Happy fucking Thanksgiving. Yes, yeah, we decided what better way to celebrate Thanksgiving than further crimes against Native Americans in this book. At least 500 pages of crime against Native Americans. Um, Before we get started, I want to let you know that we now have a website. We have our own domain. It's bodicetipplers.com. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. And before I go any further, I want to say we have not thanked uh, my husband, uh, our in-house graphic design. <laughs> you might know him as Cousin Barnabas. Um, he, it's his uh, Dark Shadows uh, podcast that we're writing the coattails of. And he's done everything on this. He edits the podcast. He does all of the website work. Um, he, he's like totally the MVP. And he does it all like um, with a smile and without giving me any shit about it. So everybody, please thank him. Yeah, it's really nice. All we do is just talk and then say, make this work. And it's really kind of the best thing. Yeah, because I really so can't stand you. to hear myself talk. So yeah, thank I, you I have not listened to any of these. I can't stand it. Um, also, before we get started, yeah, a couple of warnings about this book. This book does have very graphic depictions of non-consensual sex, both with the main characters and also with side characters. I will say the main characters, it's more of... More of a heavy ravaging. It's within the context of a fantasy relationship. So honestly, that didn't bother me very much, but it will bother other people. Yes. Also, this book, just to kind of give fair warning, this book is a book about a white woman and a man of color, a Native American. It's written by a white woman, and it kind of shows why it's so important to have representation. Um, So we're also going to be, you'll be able to find on the website, Romance novels written for and about Native Americans by Native Americans. Yeah, I also made a really cool Spotify playlist of um, contemporary music by Native Americans and, um, I guess you say, Native Americans and Canadian First Nations. Yes. North American Native Americans. Yes. So, (laughs) that's just something to kind of keep in mind when we go through this as well. The thing is, she tried. I mean, like, I like this a lot better than a lot of the... I I thought it was not nearly as racist as I expected it to be because she was... Trying, but then that again, is kind of the theme of this yeah. book is it's racist, but not as racist as I thought it was going to be. But, but I mean, that's like being, that's like having a little bit of an STD. Like you either are all, <laughs> like you, you either all or no. Uh, yeah, I don't want to give white people credit for <laughs> yeah. trying because they're the only people who get credit for trying. It's really right? true. Yeah, so I, that that's not like really a mitigating factor. But if you're thinking about reading this book, just be aware. Yeah. I have the, this book was written in 1981, um, and I have the official description, which we kind of do. It's Savage Ecstasy by Janelle Taylor. It was like lightning, the first time they looked into each other's eyes. (laughs) Great Eagle, the captured Indian brave. Again, I'm reading the official thing, so. And Alicia, the beautiful young settler. As the proud Ogala warrior was being tortured by his white captors, only Alicia seemed to notice he was a human being, handsome and strong, and the one who took her breath away. But if Alicia could have read Grey Eagle's thoughts, she would have been even more disturbed, because from the moment he saw her, the Indian knew he had to possess the fair-skinned one, and his life would not be complete until he had made her his slave. So... That is actually pretty accurate. Yeah. That is pretty much what happens in this book. I mean, like, her heart stopped because he bit the crap out of her when, yes. <laughs> when they first met. But before we get into the plot, <laughs> our, you know, our, our drinking today, because we need a, quite a bit of it to get through this book, um, I have brought Fire Steed. It's a Pinot Grigio from the Willamette Valley of California. I couldn't find a whole lot of, like, really good North Dakota wines here in South <laughs> Carolina, but the bottle of it looks kind of... Kind of cool. It's got the primitive horse on it. So I was like, close enough. Yeah, I went to Morgan Ellie's again. Morgan Ellie's, because your racist grandma is not going to die in time for Thanksgiving. So you're going to want to go to Morgan Ellie's. Um, and they couldn't think of a wine that either had incredibly racist depictions of Native Americans, so good, or a turkey on it. So I got the Vita Verde <laughs> that um, the guy recommended for uh, Thanksgiving. And it's really cheap. And I, I really love Vita Verde. So we're going to try that also. 
Um, in addition, because we are a bunch of white people talking about this book this white lady wrote, we wanted to do more to center Native American voices. So um, I, I picked up a cookbook, The Sioux Chef's Indigenous Kitchen, that's Sioux with S-I-O-U-X, by Sean Sherman uh, with Beth Dooley. And um, he is uh, um, he is, uh, from the Sioux Nation. Um, he grew up on the Pine Ridge Reservation, which I've actually been to. Believe it or not, I have been on a mission trip there. If you were wondering how an apple can roll so far away from the tree, <laughs> that would be that would be me. Um, but yeah, so um, he he's like a part of a uh, indigenous food co-op. He has a, uh, a food truck and all, and it's about uh, using indigenous uh, foods in a, a new and novel way. And it's a really excitingly one of those. Uh, cookbook that's really fun to flip through. So I made a couple of things from it. I made some amaranth crackers. Yes. which actually turned out pretty good. They were very good. Um, but it was it was hard because like it was not an ingredient that I was used to cooking with. <laughs> and then like like oh yeah like I was gonna call it an exotic ingredient. And then I had, to, like, oh, had to check my ass because it's it's not an exotic ingredient and grows in ditches everywhere. That it's just an ingredient that <laughs> we don't use. We so. don't use. Um, although now we do because hipsters rediscover everything. They do. Thank you, hipsters. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, so the amaranth crackers are easy and also really tasty. Um, you can make them for Thanksgiving to freak out your old Uncle Kenny. It's going to be awesome. He's going to be so drunk, but so are you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's dive into the plot Jesus of Christ. this nonsense book. Savage Ecstasy. So Savage Ecstasy inexplicably takes place in 1776 <laughs> We're in talk North about Dakota. That shit. Yes. Yeah, the These heavily, Americans, <laughs> the heavily populated Well, South Dakota, I guess, if it's near the Black Hills. Yeah. Yeah. One of the Dakotas. Anyway, we're in the Dakotas in 1776. Now, again, mm -hmm. our undergraduate level of research <laughs> shows us that there are like maybe five people <laughs> in the Dakotas in 1776. And the Sioux themselves had just gotten there because yes. like in the, it was only a few decades before that, that the Sioux had moved from being farmers in the woodlands of Minnesota. Right. And here they are here. And clearly she'd obviously meant to write this in like, said it during the Civil War or something yeah. because that makes so much more <laughs> sense really than does. this. These people had barely gotten horses, you know, and here they are this fully fledged, you know, a Plains Indian society. Yes. Um, they they fully adapt. Yeah, so, so it doesn't make any sense, and that's the only time she talks about the year it is. Yeah, because she's British and she's come over for a new life, and of course all of her family died. Our and, yeah. our main character is Alicia. <laughs> yeah, because that's a name that people. So have. we have our main character Alicia, who is descended from British lords and has come over here after her family has died, and it's her and I guess her uncle, and they're living in a little town. You don't have to learn any of these people's names, which thank yes, God because they're not—they're they're, going to be out of here in a minute. So Alicia <laughs> is the most beautiful, the most beautiful, and the most kind, and dreamy, and just wonderful. She spends a lot of time thinking. She does think a lot. She opines and reminisces she and really oh my is thinking. fucking god. So Alicia <laughs> is hanging out in the village. Many men want her because, of course, they do. When. Some of the some of the other settlers come in with a Native American captive, and they're torturing him. And Alicia has no time for this, so good on Alicia. Oh yeah, yeah. She stops them. She pulls a gun on everyone. And is like, stop messing with this guy. He's a human being. So, again, props to Alicia. Well, finally, Alicia is able to dissuade the the mass to leave him alone, and they lock him up in a barn. I guess a barn. No, it's something else, but whatever. It's, it's like a smokehouse, a yeah, barn. Yeah, it's a smokehouse. Like, uh, yeah. And Alicia goes and sneaks in to go and see him and tries to feed him, and he bites her. He bites, like, the shit out of her. I mean, he bites her so hard, and it made me laugh. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, he just bites the shit out of this woman. Well, long story short, our character, whose name we don't really know, I guess we know no, because no, he's calling know. himself that. Yeah. yeah, he's calling himself by his own and name. And it's sloppily enough written yeah. that it acts like she knows his name. You're like, how does this bitch find out his name if he doesn't speak English? Yeah, but so, like, it, it's, you gotta remember, hey, this is the first book, so let's mm -hmm. be a little, uh, I'll give her white people credit, but, yeah. um, yeah, it's terribly written, and it's always switching viewpoints, and people know stuff that they have no reason to know. We and are then they jumping in and out of heads. <laughs> Big and bad. Like, yeah. oh, who's talking now? So, <laughs> all right. So, long story short, Gray Eagle escapes with the help of his BFF, White Arrow. So we've got some really great original names. So, <laughs> yeah. Gray Eagle and White Arrow go pick up their posse 
and they raise the town. They massacre every Everybody is dead, except for Alicia. Well, and a couple other people, but don't worry about them either. Yeah. <laughs> don't get attached. <laughs> yeah, so Alicia and, like, five other people are captured and taken to the Indian... Bit, like, it's more yeah. of a city. Like, yeah, it, it's like several thousand people. Yeah. Like, it's much larger than the settlement, which is one thing I really appreciated because, like, you know, like what was going on where we hadn't gotten to quite yet was yeah. enormous, like, you know, civilization. Right, and- so they're in this very large town, and the people that Alicia is with <laughs> are then tortured. And, I mean... To death. Here's the thing. Janelle Taylor's like, I went to the library. I looked in the Encyclopedia Britannica. I found out some torture methods, and I'm going to tell you about them. And she does tell you about them. They're very graphic. One guy eats hot coals. It's great. But yeah. the thing is, uh, she seems to, from what I can tell, you can never tell without a bibliography where she did her research, but um, she seems to have taken that from the Iroquois. I think what happened yes. is that she just found... She wanted to make it gritty. She wanted to make I think, it exciting. Yeah, she found, like, interesting Native American things and wanted to put it in there. Because most of them are actually, unfortunately, yeah. she was, um, she hadn't learned that you do your research, and then you don't put all of it in the book. No, she is, she is, like, a senior at a university who was like, I have looked up all of this, and I'm going to find a way to incorporate every single little bit of information. It's like there She's, was a creative writing assignment after your unit on, on the She spends three planes. pages describing a log cabin, uh-huh. which fine, and maybe, may, maybe some of you out there don't know what a log cabin looks like. Yeah, well then they burn it down, so who cares? Yeah. <laughs> so Alicia watches all of her friends and, you know, some of the men who wanted to assault her get horribly murdered. Yes. Horribly. But you know what? Our girl is plucky and she don't care. So <laughs> Well, I like, didn't care when Horace got it. No, Horace she like coming. she rolls they with burn the, Horace's dick off. She rolls with the punches and Grey Eagle has taken her because she's beautiful and blonde. And you know, I guess when he bit her Well, and because he was she did show him compassion. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Grey Eagle speaks perfect motherfucking English, but he doesn't let her know this throughout the entire yeah. book. Yeah. You so, would think that the climax of this book would be her finding out no. that he's speak- no. no. And so what this means is that every time they get together, she talks to him pleading and mm-hmm. opining and exclaiming and thinks that he doesn't know any of it. It's tedious, y'all. So, okay. So, <laughs> she goes into the tent with Grey Eagle, where Grey Eagle puts the moves on her, and she's into it. She's like, yeah, right? I am here for this. My and then she remembers man. that everyone has been horribly <laughs> murdered. And she's like, oh, well, maybe I should act with some like propriety, <laughs> like dictate that I not be so into this. So, again, there is a hard ravishing it's really a no, 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 yes thing, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, honestly, it's not like the flame and the flower, okay? Right. Yeah, this is obviously meant to be, and and, and it felt like that to me. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I felt like it was okay within the context of this well, fantasy relationship. Our girl Alicia settles into slave life pretty quickly. She's like, a slave, by the way. Yeah, like, she is a slave. At, you know, and she learns six words of Lakota. And, and, and oh my God, if I saw those six words ever again. Yeah, I mean, and again, the author does try to, like, create language and put you in place by putting these six words in over and over. And you learn them in time <laughs> as she learns them. So, I guess it's a clever device. It is. I, I had no problem really right. with that. So, Alicia is hanging out. She's learning stuff. You kind of get the feeling that Alicia has been with... Grey Eagle for months, possibly even a year. Well, and then, you knew it hadn't because they hadn't talked about the winter. That's the yeah. only reason you knew it hadn't yeah. been a year. And every night, Alicia is in to bang on Grey Eagle. And every night, they communicate without words. Like, the sex scenes are so just, <laughs> they get deeper and deeper. They have the most meaningful conversations. <laughs> it's like a TED Talk every time these two fuck. Yes. Because they are just into it. And then the next morning, everything goes to shit again. So... We go through that a lot. Now, and the thing is, we were completely into this book yeah. at this point. But so it just went it. on and on and on this and on. This book is approximately 500 pages. It feels like 10,000. And it is probably <laughs> 250 pages too long. If she had cut out half of this book, it'd have been, I'd been yeah. like here for it. Yeah. Because we spend the most of the time is describing Alicia learning how to cook or Alicia braiding her hair or Alicia like getting some. Native American underwear? Yeah, she got, yeah. 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 So. <laughs> indigenous underpants. Yep. Indigenous underpants. And then she was like, nothing like the bloomers yeah, I had at home. Like, uh, the what? The what? You mean <laughs> yeah. the dress reform from Amelia Bloomer you had yeah. in 1776? Call, see me after class, you know. Yeah, so Alicia 
Uh, and, and it's just Alicia talking. Oh. It's Alicia talking and to herself. The same, things the same thing all the time. The things that we hear the most in this book, the things that you're going to hear are, "I hate you. I'll never forgive you for this," and "I wish you could understand me," and just it's the same four sentences. And like this, you know, I, you know, I care and about so, him. It's all in like emotional, like yeah. bold italic. You know, it's always her at 11, like, you know, begging. And of course, you know, this is a woman who is held as a slave and everybody is getting tortured to death. So that, I mean, I'm not. I feel not like realistic. Alicia was like a 12 year old girl writing in her journal. Yeah. Um. So, okay. Alicia's doing cool, hanging out, banging, learning how to cook, becoming one with the forest. Meanwhile, there is one character that you sort of have to remember that was in the town that also got taken. Her name is Kathy. Kathy and Brown. And Kathy, Kathy Brown did not have the same luxurious fate to bang hot-ass Grey Eagle in his fancy tent. Kathy gets put basically in a fuck tent. Yep. Like, I guess that's the best thing to yep. call it is, like, the the sex tent. And the, she the becomes share your a slave tent. Like yeah, she becomes a sex worker. Tent. And you feel bad for Kathy, but she also hates Alicia because she's so beautiful. It is hard to like Kathy, man. Yeah. She hates Alicia because she's beautiful. Again, a theme that you see in these books. And also, she's just constantly thinking of ways to take Alicia down. And eventually, what happens is Kathy just sort of leans into uh, being she, a sex slave. She realizes if she enjoys it, then it's okay. And it was barfy. Like, mm-hmm. see, the rest of this kind of rapey stuff was fine with me because it was in this fantasy context. But this yeah. stuff with Kathy was gross. It's really gross. And they could have, I mean, it's just a tiny bit of it. They could have taken that out. It would have been fine. But, okay, so there's this fuck tent. And Great Eagle, he wants to be... He wants to enjoy Alicia. He cares but, about Alicia. He doesn't before, want to be admitted. He's got this whole family chief thing. Before we get to that, I guess to, to backtrack, Alicia obviously doesn't know everything about being a Native American slave because she's never been one before. And maybe if Homeboy would speak English, <laughs> he would tell her some stuff. So she makes some mistakes along the way, like defying him and this kind of stuff. So there's emotional and corporal punishment given to her. And like the first instance of this is he almost breaks her hand. Yeah, it's pretty intense. And then she betrays him or like she she does something again that upsets him and they're not anything like huge. No, I, he thought that the, her locket had like a man of her age and not her father in it. It was, it's yeah. just all this little, it's made up shit that yeah. bothers me. This so, is Janelle Taylor not knowing how to write conflict. So what happens is like after one of these like, you know, she doesn't cook something right or, you know, she asks a question when she should be going inside. He decides that he's gonna fuck with her by pretending that he's going to put her in the sex tent. Well, he wants her to accept being his personal slave because that's easier for him socially. Yes. Because he's a chief's son. He's, like, a, you know, set up to be the next chief. Yeah. And um, he he can't really go around marrying this this white hoe. Yeah. Um, so he's kind of hoping that he could just work this out. <laughs> so he asks his best friend, White Arrow, he's like, hey, bro. And they've gotten close. White Arrow and Alicia yeah. have become, like, they're like They're friends. like friends. He's yeah. like, hey, bro. I need you to help me, you know, teach this bitch a lesson. So, we're going to put her in the sex tent, and you're going to pretend like you're going to rape her. And that'll teach her. Well, Alicia goes into some kind of... Fugue state? Coma? I don't know. Like she a waking swoons hard. She, she like... has a waking coma. They have to bring the witch doctor out. <laughs> it's a whole thing. And, again, it's super upsetting because... Like this guy is really fucking with yeah, her. Like, yeah, and I mean, like, uh, and he did it specifically because she was so close to Gray Arrow. Like they had, uh, well, yeah. White Arrow. They had like an actual genuine relationship with each other. And he was like, and he was like oh, oh, yeah, that'll work. Yeah. So, all right. Later on, after <laughs> uh, after a whole bunch more, nothing happens. Yes. Alicia's like, I'm gonna make a plan. I'm gonna get out of here because he's going to the war council. So, and this is what we find out. It's only been a month. Yeah, it's only been a month. We thought this bitch was there for years because she's been cooking. She's, like, she's weaving. She's making baskets. She's skinning animals. Like, she is full in, has learned how to be a Native American little lady. So, and again, Hershey is here. Hershey says hello. I guess Hershey's the real star. This is Hershey the is the, spot, the, the star. I was going to lock her away, but people enjoy her. So, all right. Well, 
Alicia and he are, again, at odds with things, and he then burns a locket that she has. It's the only thing she has left of anything. Anything. So he burns it. She says that she'll hate him forever. And then they she immediately says it they immediately have the most deep, meaningful sex they've ever had. Is that the one where that's storming and they're fucking on the ground in the storm? Or no, I that's, forget. I think, it, you know, they all blend together. Yeah, well. yeah. Again, a lot of nothing <laughs> happens except deep, meaningful sex that doesn't really mean anything because everybody starts fighting the but, next day. So she runs away when he leaves. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, and she has no place. She doesn't know where she is. She doesn't know where this fort is fort pierre which of course is staffed by american soldiers in 17 uh, it's very strange a- anyway it's very strange so but she's gonna run and of course she has no ability to run she has no ability to live off the land she gets <laughs> cornered by a rattlesnake which i don't think should be there it looks like she then again i think she was like snakes. i think she was like cornered by that rattlesnake for like 12 hours yes. too because like the way they describe it is she is just exhausted from standing by this rattlesnake and of course this is when gray eagle has found her and he had previous to this resolved that he was gonna be nice to her and everything was gonna change well well look what you made me do yeah so he sees her he manages to shoot the snake with an arrow from like a thousand yards <laughs> and brings her back and this time he's really got to punish her. So because this is, of course, uh, the whole community has seen that his slave ran away. Yes. So I mean, and the thing is, she seems to understand that, but then she understands it again and again and again because she. Oh God, don't even get. Yeah, started. y'all. I mean, yeah. it's a lot of Alicia rediscovering the same things for the <laughs> first time. That's what this book really is. Yeah. So Alicia basically is taken in front of the entire village, tied to a pole. And she is... Whipped almost to death. Whipped almost to death. He whips her five times. That was the thing. They gave us the number. But they're so intense. And obviously, I mean, you being whipped once is too many times. So he whips her. But Alicia has vowed that she is not going to make a noise during it. And she, she, she is beaten to death almost. Mm-hmm. But that bitch keeps quiet. And... The villagers are like, all right, all right. Like, that's how she wins them over. But they had already started to like her because she's real good at, like, hooking shit. Yeah, so, So, she, I mean, she took a beating like nobody's business. And, ugh. So, then Grey Eagle, again, he beats her almost to death. She is in a very bad way. He feels bad for it, but then has to, like, peace out for a, like... A war council. A war, like another war to, council. I forget who they're going to war against, but it doesn't really matter. He cause. realizes that he loves her again for the 15th oh, time. And he's he dips out. And when he dips out, they're discovered, like, finally this village is raided by American soldiers. And everybody who can run, runs. So, right. he, of course, she can't run. And, like, the couple people around her, you know. Mm-hmm. So, she gets somebody killed, I think, you know, mm-hmm. by not being able to run. Because she's well, she's, she's, she's comatose. I mean, I, yeah, she's in a comatose. She's, she's comatose. She's, like, badly infected, she, you know. This yeah. Is so, very touch and go lucky for her, she's found by some, you know, British no. or English so- American. American. We're no, Americans no. at this point. <laughs> some American soldiers who bring her to this fort that should not exist, but they're at this fort. And she's nursed back to health. Well, the most realistic thing that happens in this book afterward, after she's nursed back to health, is mass slut shaming that happens to mm-hmm. her. Like, everybody's like, what's up? You were just shacking up with this guy. Seems like you kind of like it. Oh, he beat you? Nah, it's yeah. fine. You're fine. We can see it in your eyes. You were, you were thirsty for it. And Kathy doesn't help. Oh, yeah, they did. They managed to save Kathy's ass, too. I forgot about old Kathy. So <laughs> they managed to save Kathy's ass. So then we have 100 pages of her being slut shamed and her making friends with some half Native American, half... American. American guy that I, I don't remember, remember his, his name. name. He's in love with her too because anybody who spends more than five minutes with Alicia falls in love with her. He then explains to her all of the things that she already knew. She had these epiphanies throughout. But. Of like why Great Eagle did the things that he did to her. And she's like, oh. I'm like, bitch, you, we, we 200 pages this. ago, you were talking about this in your head. You know this shit already. Anyway. So, Grey Eagle gets wind that Kathy's, not Kathy, Alicia's still alive. And he's like, I'm getting, I'm getting my bitch back. So, he takes a whole, like, he teams up with all these other tribes. And is like, we're taking this down. 
But first, I'm getting my lady back. So they make he makes an offer to the fort that if he gets Alicia back, he'll leave them. And let me say first, everybody at this fort, every white man that Alicia ever meets tries to rape her. Yeah. As in, like, literally tries to shove her up against a tree or something yeah. and rape her. There's at least four dudes in the fort. Yeah. To try to rape her. She reads a trapper who has no purpose whatsoever but, but to try to rape yeah. her. Like, the only people who don't try to rape Alicia are Native American. Yeah. So, but everybody else, every white man tries to rape this woman. And even, so. the, like, even the Native American dudes are in love with her, but they, like, they're so scared of Grey Eagle. They're yeah. like, ah, back off. So, <laughs> the book ends, y'all. This whole fucking marathon of a book that is 500 pages. This book that is, again, five. Hundred pages. It does not have an ending. It does not have an ending. The book ends with her getting on a horse with Grey Eagle, and that's the fucking end. And she doesn't find out he speaks English. All right, so th- I found out that this is the first of nine. Yes. Nine books in the Grey... And they're all called Savage something. The Grey <laughs> Eagle series. Nine <laughs> books about these two fucktards. So I rage bought the second book because I, I was like, I was like oh, motherfucker, one. you are not ending with this bitch just getting <laughs> on the horse. And I was like, come on. Come on, like, at least let him show emotion. No. These two assholes banging out in a forest <laughs> without him even being like, yo, babe. I'm sorry, I, ha- I beat you almost to death. Like my bad. I, maybe I could have found another way. No. So I stopped reading. I don't. I found out that he, she does not find out that he speaks English until the end of the second book. The end of the second book, and I was like, you know what? Good on Janelle Taylor because that bitch scammed everybody in 1980s. She was like, I'm gonna write this sort of shitty book series. I'm gonna put nine nine of them out there. Nine goddamn books about these two assholes and people are gonna buy them because they're so fucking infuriated. Like, like, in book three, Alicia falls in a goddamn river. Like, that's when I went to the bathroom in the two towers. You know? I mean, <laughs> Jan- Janelle Taylor <laughs> might very well be like a genius. Can we talk about Janelle Taylor for because a second? Because she got you need to paid. Google her picture. Look yes. at the picture. Stop of this listening lady. to me talk and look at Janelle Taylor right now. This is a lady in a sweater vest who goes to the beauty shop once a week and has an appointment. Oh my gosh! With and appointment. She, I mean, she's still living. She lives in Georgia. She started off as a nurse. Now she lives on a 79-acre retreat. So, again, Janelle Taylor is smarter than (laughs) us two bitches. Yeah, right? Because she is getting paid. But... Her Twitter is the most amazing thing because it's just old lady complaints. It's complaints about I'm like I'm with her. Like she got a whole loaf of bread that had holes in every damn piece. I, Janelle, you got you got Savage <laughs> Ecstasy money to go buy some more Nature's Own. Like <laughs> of course it was Nature's Own, you know. Yeah, and then like her being like talking about the Chew and how she was upset that the Chew was being canceled. <laughs> so it's pretty epic. But yeah, nine books. No, There's no. like, I guess the first four are about Grey Eagle and Alicia, and the rest of them are about their children. So I guess they That's all. That's how it works, yeah. But God, the ending of this book <laughs> is so frustrating because it's basically like it's like the end of every Hulk episode, like where they just like walk <laughs> off like into the fucking yeah. Sun- yeah, like they just walk off into the sunset. Well, and the thing is, I would not have minded that nearly as much, except that I liked it in the beginning. Oh, my gosh. If like, I didn't hate reading this the whole time. And you know what? That goes to our first question of... Of Bastard to Bay Ratio? I'm putting him at, like, a seven because he does some dick things that are, like, yeah. cross-cultural dick moves. Like, it doesn't matter what culture you're in. If you burn a necklace, kind of an asshole. Yeah, yeah. If you, you beat know. somebody to death that you love, I you're kind of an asshole. I mean, again, hot for him. Yeah. I kind of had him in my mind as I always loved in Last of the Mohicans, the movie, not the book, because they're wildly different. I was never, I had no time for Daniel Day-Lewis. I was always Team Uncas. <laughs> like, he could get it, and the story between him and Alice was way <laughs> hotter to me than <laughs> Cora and Nathaniel. So I was like, yes, here for it, thinking it was going to be kind of that thing. And so, super thirsty for him. And he's just confused by her. And she's you know, like, she got good descriptions of him with his, like, he was just tawny. He yeah. was, like, the most tawny person. Which at least makes sense for him to be tawny. I'm like, all these British dudes are always yes, tawny. they're always tawny. Books. This guy like, is literally tawny. He has, you know. No man named Neville should ever be described <laughs> as tawny. And, like, you see that a lot in the British romances. Tawny-ass Neville. So, Grey Eagle had great hair. 
He was tawny. He wore his, like, buckskin pants. Oh, no, they were, uh, his loincloth was, uh, yes. they, they were making fun of his loincloth that was tight, as in, like, those, like, uh, yeah. no homo dudes at the, uh, yeah. the settlement were all, like, a tight loincloth of oh. his. Like, you can see his dick through it, and I'm I like, was, you can see what? I was super thirsty. How, how, how yeah. <laughs> so, again, I'm just that. giving him a seven because, you know, he did almost beat her to death. So, you know. Uh, I kind of feel like you had to do that, you know. I know. I know. I, I'm totally forgiving him for that, and I'm sorry. You, you, if you're going to read these books, you kind of have to. And again, he was being a dick about, like, shit. hiding the English, the fact that he can speak that English. That was so dick balls. Like, that, I think, I would be madder about finding that out than, like, you beating me to death. Oh, I'd be yeah, like, you yeah, son yeah. of a bitch, I've been talking to myself like an asshole for... <laughs> a month, even though it seems like seven months. Like, yeah. you could have been having a conversation with me. Like, f- fucking... Re- you could have just explained shit. You could have yeah, just, you just told been like, me. Hey, girl. Yeah, so, again. I, he, out of the ones that we have read so far, to me, Grey Eagle is the most bangable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was pretty fucking bangable. And I think it's funny that all the women in the book, even the white women, agree. Yes! They like, all talk about, like, I've, it, the his, rumor is he's very handsome. His hotness crosses racial divides. Yes. Like, proving... Yeah. And something, oh, by the way, that we should point out is that in a lot of these books, the dude turns out to be either a white guy who was raised by Native yes. Americans or a half breed. Well, in fact, this guy is, this is an interracial romance. Yeah. So, I mean, so again, that big too. ups to Janelle for making this a legit interracial romance. That was the sound of not a cork, but a screw top yeah, opening. Yeah. So, we're doing the Vino Verde, which is Castle something. Castle Garcia. I can't see it around. Da, 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 da. arm. Oh, are we, are we doing, like, well, not Foley effects. We're doing, like, live sound. Yes, this is us. Again, you've got you've got a little dachshund mix happening in the background. Snoring. Okay, so, but that leads us to number two. How racist is it? Okay, here's my thing with this book. Again, I think, like we said, us white people, we always get credit for good intentions, and we shouldn't. <sighs> We, uh, to remember that this is 1981 and this woman wrote a story and she really did try to legitimize a thing. These I, people are not stereotypes. Yeah, I will give her credit for that. But again, I think moreover what I got from this book is not so much overt racism. It's like a perfect example of casual, casual racism in that it's someone assuming a voice mm. when really they don't really, you know... You haven't earned that shit. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't know anything about actual Native Americans. Yeah, so. She's never, I, mean, I suspect that when she wrote this, she had never met anybody. Who's and, you know, identity, you when know? you, like, do a little bit more research on this subgenre, she's not the worst offender. Oh, God, but, she's by but, far better than yeah. most of them. There was this lady who wrote a billion of these. And Cassie she, Edwards, it's her name, that is, you She like, was um, actively, um, she was plagiarizing yeah. the Native American dialogue from nature books and from, yes, like, so, spoken word stuff, like, essays and stuff by Native Americans. I think Americans. that it's that kind of racism that is, you know... It's that sneaky, dangerous racism because, again, you're like, oh, well, you know what? She, we, we, we say she tried a thing. And, again, this is written at a time when a lot of people of color didn't have an opportunity to write these voices. So, again, good on her for trying I to create it. I thought it was going to be worse. I thought it was going to yeah. be, like, heat big wampum. And, yeah. and it was not. It was yeah, not it was, like that. She really did make an attempt to write it from a legitimate standpoint. And but she was trying to do well-rounded characters. The mm-hmm. thing is, that's on her poor writing ability. Yeah. So I can't really blame her for that. Right. And you know, she was, was not trying to make... They don't all sound alike. They don't all um, feel alike or there's look no, alike. Or, there's you know. no cartoonish versions. You don't feel like this is a cigar store Indian no. situation. So, again, it could have been worse. So <laughs> that's kind of the theme for this one. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it is, and but I mean, I do appreciate that she did. Of course, the Sioux are kind of easiest to get right because yeah. they're your like um, your most uh, um, like trope namer of when you um, think of, of a na- nations, yeah, you're like you know? oh, when we think of a Native American group, but, we're gonna usually but then think she of... does that thing where I think that she, you know, she stole the whole torture to death thing from, uh, like, like, yeah. from the Iroquois. In other words, she was doing good and not being specific. But then, like, the second you do that, you kind of indicated that you think that all Native Americans are, are the, the same, same instead yeah. of, like, you know, being millions of people with thousands of cultures. Exactly. So I think, yeah, I think she did, like, kind of an overarched, like, again, 
Encyclopedia Brown at her local library or maybe her set that she got, you know, in her house where one came a month. And she opened the in section or probably at the time the I section for Indian and was just like, do, do, do. Okay, this says this, this says this, this says this. So she does do research. But like we said, it's like it would be the same as characterizing. It's the, it's, it's the same trap that a lot of, again, white people get into when we come to cultures that we don't understand or we're not familiar like think with. think that Africa is all one place. Even yeah, it's exactly. It's a continent many times bigger than the United States. Exactly. So I think that's yeah. where, I think that's the problematic part of it. Yeah. Is it, is she, and I mean, of course, in it's all just, these books, you have this concept that people would say is a positive stereotype. You've got these noble savages, and they're close to the earth, yeah. and they use every part of the buffalo and everything. And they're, they're taking things that are true and making the stereotype out of them. And even a positive stereotype always has a nasty center exactly. to it. Exactly. Because then, of course, you're like, well, they don't understand money, so I traded these beads for 80,000 yep. acres of their land. And like, no, they, they, they're they aware that you... <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Your army just did that. They're... <laughs> <laughs> so again, I think it could have been worse, but also I think, like I said, we're gonna have a list up of romance novels written by native authors. Yes, so uh-huh. look at those instead of this. Yeah, I mean, I'm not telling you not to. The only, the, I'm telling you not to read this because it's very, very overly long. This and is such a written. long book. This is such a long book. I'm not gonna tell you don't read and enjoy these 70s and 80s romances because otherwise we would be out of our multi-million podcast deal. But <laughs> <laughs> right, I mean, I think again, uh, it's. I, I think that, and this is kind of the thing. I, you know, I, I don't want people to think that we're just doing this to blindly mock these people that obviously started a whole fucking industry and like we're never going to take that away because you know what as problematic as some of this stuff is like these ladies gave voices and I saw a thing recently that brought up romances and people talking about romance novels being a guilty pleasure and you're being made to feel guilty well romance novels usually are the one genre where a woman gets what she wants Mm -hmm. and doesn't have to give anything up for it they're women's stories And so, yeah, I don't want us to come from, like, obviously we're mocking, but it's a mocking from love. And we're not coming from that perspective where, because we're talking in the year 2018, we can't understand, you know, know, like, oh, how how dare you be so shitty old people. But you know what? We still gotta call out the racism, though, because otherwise... Head jumping and... (laughs) Shit not happening for 500 pages. Okay, that's... 1981 or today. I'm calling it out, yeah. I'm calling it out. So, anyway. All right. This is also one way that women, many of them who were housewives, didn't have jobs, yeah. could make a ton of money right Oh, my God. Shit. Like, this woman, Janelle Taylor, was a nurse, was studying. Like, she kept studying to be a nurse. And you can tell she's good at research because she researches the shit out yeah, of stuff. Yeah, but then stuff. she doesn't know when not to yeah. and put her in. So, she made a thing. It's the same with, you know, the flame and the flower uh, the fart the that woman shit. just decided to write a book so good on him anyway yeah, yeah so, i mean we're gonna be doing fern michael she did the exact same yeah. thing she was told she couldn't write a book so she yeah. wrote a book um so what is the cw level of authenticity for this book oh, Lord. it varies a bit doesn't it it does vary a little bit like i feel 1776. like 1776 i feel like this is sort of like the rain version <laughs> of the cw like this is the version of rain for Native American books. You know, like, you got some good stuff in there. But then I think, like, vampires show up yeah, in, like, they season fuck four it up. of that. They just, yeah, they just so, the fuck up. Can you imagine if you were in the, let's call it Continental Army, in 1776, the American Army, and General Washington told your ass to go to South Dakota? I mean, I feel like there's bigger fish to fry. <laughs> so they're, they're, like, doing other things. They're fighting other things at the point. Um... You know, Native American panties. Oh, yeah. So there's this thing throughout this book, and I, you do see this in a lot of these books by women who are obviously uncomfortable with the realities of history who are writing historical yeah. romances. So there's a point, and it, like, it's it's a, an important point in the book where he gives her these indigenous panties. Yep, Native American panties, And then y'all. He's, she's so Everybody grateful that, she gave, that he gave her three... Um, yeah. uh, deerskin dresses so she can wash one every day. Like, yeah. Excuse me? Yeah. Have you ever washed anything leather, Janelle? You haven't, have you? No. Because that's not how it fucking no, works. No, it's not. Like, girl, you just sit in that stink. It's all right. Yeah, but he's sitting in that stink, too, and eventually you just get used to that shit, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I mean, but no, indigenous panties are not a thing, because neither were colonial panties. No, 
You were just hanging loose, and it was cool. I have seen, like, some 19th century, I yeah. guess you'd say, petty pants, and they're split at the crotch, because how else are you taper, supposed to go yeah. potty yeah. Um, in your hoop skirts? You're yeah. not going to sit on, yeah, so you do the, I guess, No, most people squat. just had a chemise, like, this time period, you've just been in your chemise. Yeah. And then again, later on, you get the, the split pant. Yeah. Um, and you're going to wear so. that, you're going to want to air that shit out anyway. Yeah, because. exactly. <laughs> um, so, again, it could, like, a, like a, a, it could have been worse. Oh, like, far, I thought it was going to be so much worse. I feel like, again, that's the theme for this book. But she did put in a lot of stuff that was true and that you don't see yeah. in a lot of these books. Like, the settlement is of uh, like, uh, yeah, several large. thousand people, you yeah. know? The, like, the Sundance, that's a real thing. Yeah. You know, like, all this, there's a lot of, like, good stuff. It's just that uh, she just wasn't a good enough writer to kind of bring it yeah. home. Well, again, it's her first book, so... She hadn't learned to edit yet. If you were to, in your brain, move this to, like, the 1860s, the know. research would not be that bad. Yeah. Yeah, be pretty good. Um, would you mind if somebody slapped the heroine? It depends. Is she talking? Oh, God, she got slapped a lot. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. we kind of saw it happen. She got slapped. She got bit. She got her arm almost broken. She got the threat of, like, being raped by her friend. She got whipped. She got slut-shamed. She kind of went through the ringer. And you know what? Girl just kind of took it all on the chin. Like, she is kind of the perfect point. She's like, meh, I'm fine. Well, I would say that she didn't respond in a realistic way to watching people that she knew get tortured to death. But then again, I hate it when people, like, look at grieving parents of missing kids and, like, try to judge, yeah. like, based on their behavior. Because, like, people just deal with trauma uh, in different ways. I don't know. There's a difference between... 20 minutes after you have seen a man's dick cut off and burned and another man have to swallow hot coals and then you're like i'm in for this like <laughs> you're touching my boobs like <laughs> you know um, anyway um and then her the timeline was very compressed for everything yes, emotional yeah. and also physical so again i I, you know, she she had enough happen to her. But, I mean, I liked her, especially in the beginning. She was spunky. She was, you know. Yeah. She wasn't, like, a dish rag. Like, she was a lot better than the flame and the flower bitch. It's just that she would not stop talking. I know. And she didn't have anything new to say. For a book that had one <laughs> character do most of the talking, where another person d is not <laughs> supposed to speak English, this book had a shit ton of dialogue. Yeah. Like, just a shit ton of dialogue. And it was all the same thing. Like, Janelle Taylor had a page full of actual words. And, like, what she did, <laughs> she was like, them. put this in here. And then I want to put this in here. That's my typing noise. But, yeah, <laughs> she just kept talking. And it was the same things about, Grey Eagle, I don't understand why you can't love me the way that I love you. Grey Eagle, I hate you. And I'll never forgive you for this. White Green. Arrow, you're my best friend. Oh, then, look. It is kind of hilarious. There's some squirrels. <laughs> Green Eagle and uh, and White Arrow are just like talking about her just right in front of her constantly. Like, why does she do that? I don't know. White people are like that. Yeah. But why does she keep doing that? Because she don't got nobody to talk to except for Kathy who hates her. Oh, and there was, I guess we should mention, there is the, and this is in every one of these captive books, like, um, you know, there, there is a promised bride for Grey Eagle who is a bitch to her. And, like, you yeah. know, the same thing, if it, if it were a sheik, it would be the first wife. Ugh. There's always a woman um, who is just, like, a, yeah. a cunt for no reason at all. Yeah. Except that, like, somebody exists, and then we're just supposed to think that this is a bad person because we're supposed to like the heroine. Exactly. Yeah. Shayla, was that her name? Anyway, she was... Yeah. Wow. She just made things worse on many occasions by yeah. just her presence there. Yeah, it was... And I don't like that at all. I don't understand why in these books, women can never be on the same side. Like, we have not read one yet where yeah. there are women We don't have a whole are... lot of women who are just, like, friends. Women are doing it for... And I think, again, that's the nice thing about the more contemporary romances that are, like, a lot of times trilogies and stuff where you have a group of friends mm -hmm. and, like, books that actually, like, pass the Bechdel test, you know? Yeah. Like, the, yeah, like, because this one, well, I I don't know, she probably has something, like, Kathy probably has something nasty to say to her that it doesn't involve Great Eagle at some point. Yeah. As in, like, I can see your indigenous panties, I don't know. Yeah. So it, it might have passed it to that test, but I don't, I don't know. Yet. Yeah, no, yeah. So, I mean, again. <laughs> and there's this mean lady when she gets to the fort and everything, like, these, yeah. these books are always like this. The, the women are always Slut against each other, and yeah. I hate it. I yeah. hate that. Um... So, will, uh, oh yeah, would your 12-year-old self have shamed your Mima? Or no, uh, or the dog eared any pages. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's I would have dog eared so many of these pages hot. because I was so into this. I was like, yeah. again, the sex parts 
got well, tedious after a while because it was like the same thing. Like <laughs> they're always coming to Revelation while they're doing. Yeah, that. like here's the thing. Like we're still not into the point of like super graphic sex, but like we know that boobs are touching, and we like got throbbing manhoods touching bits. So like we got some soft folds. We, for we, sure. Yeah, we got folds and we got bits. So we start. We're starting to learn where the slots go. So yes, I would have loved that. But yes. like now, as like. 30 something <laughs> Courtney is like ah, I'm sick of these two doing it. it's the same thing like now you yeah. need kind of like okay switch it out do it flip her over yeah. like yeah <laughs> yeah but, I expect oh, like, oh wait oh wait you know what I take this back because there is one time where <laughs> they have a fight and to make up for being a dick he lets her be on top Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, that was, like, their, oh, we're, again, we're super connected. Like, y'all, Alicia is that girlfriend of yours that drives you fucking crazy. That's always, like, you're, like, leave his ass. No, we're super connected. And you don't know what he's like when we're not all around each other. And then other. the next morning, it's like, yeah. I'm leaving his ass, but then tonight. Oh, he's oh super connected. And he's you not guys, coming. Is he just party? You just don't understand. Like, he's super sweet when we're alone and no one sees us together because he's, you know, he's a ashamed of me and i totally get it but he's changing like she's that girlfriend uh -huh. you know the one you know the one where you're just like debbie i can't fucking listen to this anymore leave his ass you have like, a message for her when you get up and it was at 7 a.m like you just left his house didn't you oh yeah. my god i told you not to go back there. exactly but the thing is okay so this is somebody who is trying to make the best of a terribly shitty situation. i mean i mean obviously it's stockholm syndrome yeah like oh well let's go back oh, i meant to talk about this before about the tradition of captive narratives yeah that remember when this book actually was supposed to happen in 1776 my ass mm -hmm. um these were already super popular you got your mary jameson your um yeah mary robinson i forget her name um but <laughs> <laughs> i enjoyed these, that these women who in real life did get captured by native americans yeah. wrote their memoirs because either they came back they didn't you know whatever happened they were, slut -shamed. They they were broken off yeah they were slut shamed and women Especially, we're mm -hmm. reading these things and they sold like hotcakes so much that they got, a bunch of fake ones came out. Yeah. So your great, 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 great grandma was touching herself under her not bloomers. Yeah. Um, reading these things because you know that a lot of it was like, ooh, how bad can it get? But you know some of that was sex. Oh, that it's was obviously. About sex. I mean, it's all yeah. about the titillation. It's all about. Mm -hmm. This is not. What did he do to her? It's, you know, it's not a new kink. It's not a, you know, it, it, this is a kink. Like, some of the very first. I guess we'll say contemporary sex books or captive narratives. Yeah, the yeah. chic, you know, things like that. Oh, and I'm yeah, sure people we'll... wanted to watch, like, Valentino act like yeah. he was an Arab So, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's hot, okay? I admit it. And so, yeah, if you had read these people's actual narratives about marrying... Yeah. You know, Native Americans and, 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 and that they, they were pagan mm -hmm. and you're like, ooh, tell me more about that. Yeah. What was that like? You know, I mean, that's all mm -hmm. that. It was the same kind of thing in your brain that gets yeah. activated by both of these things. So um, I'm not saying that it's good because it's, it's profoundly othering is yeah. what it is. But because to think about like whether it's a Native American, whether it's um, you know uh, an, an, an Arab, whether it's like, you know, a person we from usually, somewhere else. We usually deal with like the, and again, the incarnations of this especially the time period that we're looking at you're still you're looking at shades of tan yeah like in dealing with these books like we're you know we're not like our melanin isn't going to be too crazy oh no we're, we're not going to see anything too in our, yeah, yeah no so if they're if they're tan it's like you can get away with it right i mean i was really kind of surprised because mm -hmm. I, I kept yeah. expecting him to be like yes. yeah a half yeah yeah there to be like that's why he's got like whatever he's got something like a locket or whatever and yeah. then you find out that really he was whoever's daughter yeah. or whoever probably not whoever's daughter but whoever's son so would you judge your grandma if she if you found this on her night I would judge her for reading the shitty fucking book <laughs> you know what like I feel like but I was into it I know we were both yeah. like I, I don't want to say this but I was kind of yeah I was sort of into was, it yeah, so. I if I found this on my grandmother's nightstand, I've been like, but the cover, dude. Have I you seen the cover? <laughs> yes. Go. Make sure that you check out our Twitter and make sh and our Instagram, and you can see the covers. And we'll try to post more of the covers mm -hmm. that we have but because we have some hilarious. doozies coming up. It's too. like Gary Cooper in a wig giving side mm -hmm. eye to her titties. Yeah, and her hair seems to like just melt like it's marshmallow. I think it's supposed to be a smoke signal. Oh, God. I think it I is. Think I think that. it actually is supposed to be a smoke signal. That's what I took out of it. And there's roses all around her because she's an English rose. Yeah. 
Well, they're just fucking in the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but don't it might have been, bushes. you know what? That might be like one of her punishments in book four. Yeah, she has to fuck it, in a rose bush. <laughs> like, this is it, Alicia. This is what you got. Um. Okay. So, do we have anything else? Like, what is our what is our final rating of this book? You know what? I'm gonna God. I hate myself for doing it. But again, I'm gonna give this book probably a seven out of ten because you're not giving yourself a lot of room for subsequent books with right. Well. We've been doing some really shitty ones. Yeah, so, we have. Like, oh I'm gonna, but here's the thing. I'm giving it a 7 out of 10 for a couple of different reasons. One, uh, my white privilege is showing and saying, using the, you tried a thing. Good job. Yeah. So I do think, again, especially for 1981 and somebody trying to do a thing and to make flushed out characters out of people that up until this, you know, what, what is it? Like, The Legend of Billy Jack and, like, Tonto oh and, and shit like that. So, like, I appreciate that. Also, I found Grey Eagle to be a sociopath, but also <laughs> really hot. And, again, like like I said in episode one, give me your spikes. Yeah. And he sort of had that spike vibe of being a monster, but, like, being a hot as shit monster who, I, like. I'm going to make excuses for him. That was like, he's like, you know what? I might try to break your hand, but then I'm just going to fuck you six ways to Sunday. So, like, <laughs> ah, okay, yeah. So, that's where my seven comes from. I mean, the dialogue is terrible. The jumping heads is terrible. The 200 pages of nothing. That's the problem right I there. I honestly think, I would have given this book like an eight or so if she had cut out 200 pages. Yes, yes. I think it would have been a strong book had she learned how to edit. Right. And I mean, maybe she did eventually. I'm I mean, the, not going to pick up the, number nine to find out. The second book that I rage bought was about 200 pages short, 200 pages shorter, and maybe I'll finish it. But I was just like, I can't. I, it, you know what I felt like this book is? <laughs> I feel like this book, in a lot of ways, is like a soap opera. Oh, yeah. In that... It's like, get really exciting on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, the wins, like, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays are your big days. <laughs> Fridays are obviously your big days. Like, parts of this book are sweeps week, you know. Um, so, I felt like it was a soap opera and that she was just like, well, shit, I, I, 500 pages is what I've got to write, so I'm just going to make shit up. Yeah. And You're Dickensian paid by the word. Yeah, so yeah. I think it would have been much stronger if she had shortened it. But yeah, a seven. I'm giving it a seven. I, I would, I, I, I'm such a great inflator, though. Like, I give almost everything on Goodreads a four. Like, I can't help yeah. it. I one out of ten, honestly. Okay, so remember that we're coming off of the flame and the flower, which is like a negative 20 yes. for me. Yeah. That, I mean, like, I would just... Mm. I, I would have a hard time shitting in public, but I could shit on that book if I had to in public. I yeah. hated that book so fucking much. So this one, I'm going to call it a five. Yeah. Because it was badly written. And okay, see, I will make excuses for Grey Eagle, all right? Because I understand his problems. That he has genuine sociocultural issues that he has to deal with because he's not going home to, like, fucking Fort Pierre, which didn't exist for the next goddamn I 50 mean, years. I <laughs> get it, but, like, to counterbalance it, like, like I said... Burning a bitch's necklace. That was that was pretty shitty. <laughs> Dick move in whatever. Honestly, culture. it anyway. was the hand breaking that bothered yeah. me. Like yeah. I was fine with the whipping, but the hand. I, I did appreciate, by the way, that most authors don't realize you can die. Yeah. From a from a good whipping. Yeah. So, <laughs> new new segment before yeah. we finish off. If yeah. you were to compare this to because we're bodice tipplers to a booze, what would you make it? And to why? a booze. Um. Oh, boy. I'm going to say that it's sort of a... That goes on too long. <laughs> I'm going to say it's a sort of shitty... Not shitty. A mid-shitty American beer. Like, it's okay. You can drink it in large quantities. You'll get it if, like, you go to, like, a like like, like a, a sports bar. Yeah. And it's, like, the only one-ish, like, There's maybe a Sierra one, Nevada yeah. or, like, yeah. a Blue Moon or a... Exactly. <laughs> like, and then all of a You're sudden... You're not buying Bud Light. And you know what? Because apparently, tied in... It takes nine of them to get anything done. Mm -hmm. So it's got that watered down taste. <laughs> so that's where I'm going. It's shitty American. It aspires to Sweetwater 420, but it is probably actually Blue Moon. Perfect. I love it. All right. So uh, we will see you guys next time. Please remember to check out our yes. website. It's bodicetipplers.com. We got the domain even. Um, if you have something to say to us, email us, bodicetipplers at gmail.com. Um, if you have comments on this or any other episode, if you have a plantation wedding and want to explain it to us, 
Yes. Also, be sure to check our Facebook, our Twitter, and our Instagram because we'll be posting the books that we have coming up in December. We're going to be doing three or two and a half books in yeah. December. Um, we'll, right and what? Okay, so the we're doing um, Captive Passions Cap- by what's her name? What the hell's her name? Fern Michaels. No, Fern Michaels is the the, the Christmas book we're doing. Is that the oh shit? Well, well you, you tell check them. yeah check our <laughs> check our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for those books. But we'll be doing two and a half, and we'll have the do the reading list yeah. for those. Yeah, we'll give you the do the reading list, and when we've actually read them, we will put up whether you um yes that you need to be worried to about read them. Anything you need to worry about, we will let you know. Uh, and definitely check our website because we are putting up extra material now for yes. everything that we do. We're putting up um well not read alikes read betters yeah, and I'm always doing a Spotify playlist. So probably never listens to it that makes me happy and anything else like anything that we uh, that we decide is like good information we will add it to it other podcasts that we enjoy go on there too so again it's bodice tipplers for um twitter and then bodice tipplers for instagram too it's the i mean if you just search our name because uh, yeah. nobody else has our name which is awesome we're we're, we're 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 learning and trying and doing a thing as we go and we appreciate you guys for listening oh and you can buy t-shirts now yeah every yeah. everybody have a happy thanksgiving <laughs> and please don't punch your drunk uncle but no, do punch your drunk uncle if you're going to tell us about it. Yeah. If, if you do punch your drunk uncle, be sure to send us an email and we'll read it on air. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. All right. Peace out, y'all. <laughs>